This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The history and future of Pensacola's Veterans Memorial Park on this edition of Conversations. Veterans Memorial Park near downtown Pensacola has become an iconic centerpiece to the city's landscape. From the Wall South to the Purple Heart Monument to the Walk of Honor, the park paints an indelible picture of what has been sacrificed. On this edition of Conversations, we'll look at the history of the park and what the future holds. We're joined by two members of the Veterans Memorial Park Foundation Board of Directors. Stan Barnard is a 1969 graduate of Pensacola High School and a United States Marine who volunteered to serve in Vietnam. He would later work for the Department of Defense and become a successful entrepreneur. Lieutenant Colonel Dave Glassman is a retired Marine Corps helicopter pilot. After leaving the Marines in 2010, Glassman would go on to found a Pensacola-based technology firm. Additionally, he serves on boards of several veteran support organizations. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Pleasure. excited to have this conversation because I, so many times in my daily routine, I go by the park and what a, what a, what a beautiful place it is. How did the park come about? What was the genesis of it? Well, first of all, thank you very much. Thanks to WSRE for having us. This is a real honor for us and a, and a real opportunity for us to talk to you and our community about the park. And the history of the park is, is really a, uh, an important facet to our community, if you ask me, because we're, we're such a, a veteran-centric, veteran-friendly, veteran-benevolent community in the greater Pensacola Bay Area. Um, we, in the 1st Congressional District, uh, we represent the single most dense veteran population, populous uh, congressional district in the nation. Really? And so the park is very important to so many of us, not just the veterans, but the veterans' families, the extended family members, and the community, um, not just from a military standpoint, but also from an education standpoint. And way back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, the, Vietnam, uh, the Vietnam National War Memorial went on a mobile tour. Mm -hmm. I think it was called the Mobile uh, Wall. And it came down and it visited uh, Pensacola and it was actually placed where the park is now on the bay there on Bayfront. And I believe there was, th I wasn't around at the time. I had actually just left here in uh, 1991 after getting my wings. And there was thousands of people that came to see that wall, the, that mobile wall. Uh, and Mayor Vince Wibbs at the time right. uh, was at the, at the scene there and a uh, Vietnam veteran named Lenny Collins and uh, Art Giberson, who uh, you might know Art, he has been with the Pensacola News Journal for many years, or had been, till he retired. Uh, and another gentleman veteran named N uh, Nelson, last name Nelson, who is um, since been deceased, were talking about how impactful the wall was, the, the mobile wall. To them, for many of those veterans, had never been to the, to the monument up in Washington, D.C. And as they were conversing about how incredibly impactful and emotional it was for them, because they had so many friends back then that they were uh, commiserating over and reminiscing and reflecting upon that their names were on that mobile wall. And as they were talking, Mayor Wibbs tapped Lenny Collins on the back of the shoulder and said, hey, you know who I am? And he gave him his card. I'm the mayor of Pensacola. Uh, and he said, your idea that they were conversing about as far as bringing a replica of the National Vietnam War Memorial, um, he said, we need to make that happen, call me. And so the next day, Lenny Collins called Mayor Vince Wibbs and that started a community awareness project that raised, I believe, close to half a million dollars, if not more, to do all of the engineering, all of the landscape work, um, to bring in that, that Wall South version, or that, at that time, was the only half replica of the National Vietnam War Memorial anywhere in existence in the nation. And it came here, and since then, um, the park has been built around that wall south. Stan, you're a Vietnam veteran. What, what did that mean to you to, to bring that? Oh, it, it certainly meant a lot to the Vietnam veterans. And as uh, Dave was saying, there, there were thousands that came to this. And, and to those who served there, seeing that come to, to town meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Of course, it meant a great deal more to see the actual thing built. It was mm -hmm. incredible. Right. Uh, meant a lot to the veterans. And, 
And it showed that our community did get behind the veterans and it became sort of a healing thing for all the local veterans and even uh, the veterans from all over the southeast that would come to visit Pensacola would see this. Yeah. And of course, it just uh, the park just snowballed from there, yeah. from the other memorials. What do you think is, uh, if you could kind of describe the role of the park for our community, and when I say community, not just Pensacola, but all of Northwest Florida, how would you, how would you describe that? Oh, I would, as far as a role, it's, it's incredible that uh, we have, uh, again, the military presence that we have here but it's, it, gives, it gives our nation, really, a place in the South that stands out incredibly well and speaks volumes for what Pensacola has done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I get all the time, I, I hear of people from around, the, I'm there all the time a lot, yeah. so I have all these people that walk up, and I, of course I approach them also, but you hear they're from all over the nation that visit here. And they make a point to come to that park. Yeah. It means a lot to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Well, let's talk about kind of, I want to talk about some of the monuments that are there and some of the memorials that are there, but let's talk about kind of what, what the future looks like, because I know your organization is uh, approaching this in a very robust way to continue to, to see growth and continue to, to improve the park. So talk a little bit about that. Uh, the, the future of the park is, is really kind of... Um, uh, it's reflective of what has been done in just the last two or three years, really, in terms of um, um, the growth, the caretaking, um, the rehabilitation of the park, um, the care and custodial leadership and love that's gone into that park by a few really talented and dedicated people that are volunteers. Mm -hmm. Nobody on the board of directors, there's 13 members, and nobody is a paid uh, official by any means. And what has gone into that park is kind of a, um, a very, very meticulous approach of what the landscape looks like, what the engineering aspects are of the park and the memorials, what we could refer to as the precious cargo within the, within right. the park's confines there. Um, for example, um, the Impact 100 group here mm -hmm. has been incredibly uh, gracious and generous to the Veterans Memorial Park Foundation. Um, they have now granted two grants uh, to the park, and we're actually submitting for another, I believe. Uh, but um, that one of them was to put in a, a, a $106,000 pump and grinder system to make sure that that wall south, when it rains or a hurricane comes through, what was happening was the, f the flooding would go above some of the names, mm -hmm. and it was deteriorating the lighting fixtures and all of that. So the, the Impact 100 got together, recognized the value, not just, again, on a military or veterans level, not just on the families and the dependents and friends of the veterans that have sacrificed their lives to go there, but on a, on a community-wide education, military history, educating the next generation of, of students to mm. come there and feel what it's like to serve and maybe more importantly, sacrifice so much so as to get your name on a wall, that's the club you don't want to be on. Right. Um, and so, you know, the, the community connection, the educational value, um, the history, the historical aspect has made it so that the future of the park uh, was such a high priority for the current members that we had to go back and kind of take a look at the, the engineering level, the foundational level, and, and we're putting forth great effort, not just on a, on a repair and maintenance effort, but on a fundraising level to do things like repair the World War II memorial that has shifted just based on how long it's been there, it's shifted to a point where engineers come in there and they take a look at it and they say, hey, that's not safe. Mm -hmm. And these are very heavy pieces that make up the World War II, the greatest generation memorial. And there's, you know, so it becomes very uh, important to the board and by extension to the community that we as a community come together and recognize the importance and the value to the community of the park and, and focus our energies and our resources on making sure that those memorials and the park grounds themselves are really maintained in tip-top shape. Stan, talk about some of the events that go on there. Well, there, we, of course we have the two, the, the memorial that we just had with um, our Veterans Memorial Day, and of course later in the fall we'll have a, uh, the memorial, or the event will be a Veterans Day. Um, so those are the two main ones, right. but we have flag uh, retirement ceremonies there. Uh, we have just recently we had a group called the White. What was it? Was the young lady? Oh, that, the Pensacola Young Professionals. Okay. Yes, okay. they held an event there. It was an incredible event. They yeah. had a great time there. 
uh, and you have uh, wedding photo ops there all the time. The place is, is it's incredible to see the little things that, that come there and, and, and take place at the park. It's, uh, it's, it's rewarding to see that it get used that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I want to, we have some video and I want to, I want to show the video and Dave, I'm going to have you talk a little bit about what was going on. Yeah. This was a pretty cool experience uh, for our area and for the park and, and, yeah. and I'll get you to kind of talk about what happened and what was going on when uh, sure. James rolls the, the video here. Sure. So go ahead. Yeah, so the Marine Aviation Memorial Bell Tower, um, it uh, commemorates 100 years of Marine Corps aviation. Um, which is from 1912 to 2012. And what we have in the video is uh, the seventh year anniversary of the dedication of that tower, meaning we're now into 107 years of Marine Corps aviation. And the bell tower there acknowledges the fact that the greater Pensacola area with the multiple training facilities is really the birthplace of Marine Corps aviation as it is the birth, the, na the cradle of naval aviation as everybody is familiar, especially around here. Um, but the tower represents a place for all of Marine Corps aviation to recognize, pay tribute, uh, not only to the Marines, but other service members that have died while serving with Marine Corps aviation units. It is the third national memorial to Marines, as we refer to it, the, Ar uh, the flag raising at Iwo Jima at Arlington, and then the Beirut bombing memorial at Camp Lejeune, and now this one here in Pensacola. And again, it, it allows for the families of the fallen to know that there's a place. Mm -hmm. Even if they live anywhere in the country, they know that there's a place, uh, that there's a, a memorial at the birthplace of Marine Corps Aviation where they can come and pay tribute to their, to their loved ones, to the fallen. And so that uh, video was all about the ceremony we had on May 17th as one of the many events of Military Appreciation Month this last May. Um, whereby Headquarters Marine Corps sponsored the event um, and sent down a couple of fleet aircraft, uh, not just the, the Cobra and the Huey that you saw in that video, but also a flight of two C-130s came by and did a flyby uh, okay. when we kicked off the ceremony. We also had a general, a general officer um, uh, be the guest of honor and guest speaker, and we replaced the base plate of the tower, uh, the old clay bricks that were there, with 158 brand new laser etched granite bricks uh, with other granite surrounding the base plate um, and we commemorated the loss of 311 Marines, 210 of them we've lost since 9-11 alone mm. and we had um, about 70 family members from all over the country come be part of that ceremony. We flew the section of assault support aircraft, the Huey and the Cobra, had the C-130s, um, all in an effort to kind of make sure that as we go down go down the, this, the, the path here, that the Marine Corps understands that this place holds dear to its chest that memorial bell tower. And the significance to the bell tower is, is very important too, as it, we ring the bell when out in the, in the battlefields to assemble the helicopter crews to go get a fallen Marine infantry, whatever it is, out on the battlefield. We can get that Marine stabilized and, and to treatment within, within one hour, that Marine, that soldier, that airman, that sailor, whoever we're going to get, they have a 97% chance of living if we can get them. And so the bell is very significant and in, in other ways as well to include commemorating the loss of seven uh, Marine Corps aviators that we lost uh, on February 7, 2007, the last helicopter shot down in hostilities in the Iraq war. Uh, all seven of their wings are are melted into the clapper of that bell. So there's real historical significance for the Marine Corps, but more importantly for the families of the fallen. Right, right. I want to talk about several of the monuments <coughs> and the memorials, and I'll go through them and have you gentlemen talk a little bit about it. Let's talk about the Persian Gulf War Memorial. Stan? Well, that was the most recent that was dedicated, and fortunately we had... Uh, Dr. Rhonda Cornum here with us, who was, uh, has now risen to the rank of Brigadier General. But at the time, she was a major, and uh, she was the, uh, at the air support group there with the 229, which uh, a local boy, by the way, was flying a helicopter that day, and they were tasked with a rescue mission. And uh, she was on that helicopter, and unfortunately, it was shot down, and, uh, taking the life of uh, CW4 Phil Garvey, uh, and uh, she was taken prisoner. She was, had two broke arms, a uh, bullet in the back, a couple other broken bones here and there. 
was taken into captivity and then released uh, shortly after the war was over. But she was here to speak at that, and uh, we were very fortunate to have her. But the Persian Gulf War Memorial means a great deal because we were able to bring it here to Pensacola and, and install it there, and now it becomes a part of the, the history of the park. Uh, uh, those, those people that we lost in that war will now forever be memorialized yeah. there. And uh, their, their families will have a place to come, which the Phil Garvey family had, to, they came from all over the United States to participate in this. Wow. And uh, that's what the park is really all about, is, is having a place where people can come to and uh, walk around and, and, and just enjoy the park, but also the memorials mean so much to those family members yeah. that can come there. So, you know, I thought of it like this. I mean, when I, it tells stories. And right, it, mm -hmm. it tells stories, and maybe, oh, yeah. maybe to each person the story is a little bit different. But it's mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a powerful place, and uh, um, I think a lot of times people think about just the wall south there, but like you said, there's just so much more there. We mentioned the Persian Gulf War Memorial, but also I want to talk about there's a there's a memorial there or a monument. I believe is it a memorial or a monument for the global war on terror? That's a memorial. It's a memorial, yes, sir. And it's a. Uh, it's essentially phase two of a three-phased project. Um, we may or may not ever get to phase three because sometimes these phase three endeavors are very expensive. Um, but uh, phase one of the Global War on Terror Memorial was um, some, some local uh, military slash veteran folks getting together and setting up the Global War on Terror Veterans Roundtable uh, that was originally headed up by uh, Colonel Dave Bearclaw. Um, and back in the 2005 time frame, actually on October 23rd, 2005, we lost our first, we had our first casualty of the Iraq War, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And that was Corporal J.R. Spears, who went to Tate High School. He's uh, born and raised in Molina. And, uh, you know, he was killed on that day. And I was active duty at the time here at, at Marine Aviation Training Support Group 21 as the executive officer, and Colonel Caveman Holsworth was the CO. And Colonel Holsworth presented the American flag to uh, Corporal J.R. Spears' mom that, for the funeral service. And subsequently after that, the first plaque on the wall, as you walk into the park on the entryway on the left side, uh, that began the Global War on Terror Memorial, which became a series of thir now 13 plaques representing the 13 local, in this case, all men, all bo or 13, as I say, local boys, um, that haven't come home since 9-11 involved with the global war on terror. Uh, recently, about a year and a half ago or so, actually Memorial Day of 2018, we dedicated phase two of the global war on terror, which was um, a, a monument or a, a, a sculpture of an eagle gripping an actual piece of the World Trade Center in its talons. And we mounted the, the eagle on top of the stanchion uh, as you walk in and see those individual, 13 individual plaques dedicated to the 13 local boys that haven't come home. And so, you know, the, those plaques, and I only mentioned one of their names, um, uh, you know, the, the other 12 are actually very important. You know, Staff Sergeant Clay is on there and, and Sergeant Nelson is on, and, and the list kind of goes on. Um, and it's, and, and Staff Sergeant Sibley, you know, and I, as, I'm, as I'm talking about it, I'm thinking of some of the names and faces that I knew these folks mm -hmm. personally. So when you say it's about telling stories, I say you're absolutely right. And it's also about the therapeutic value to the families, their ability to come there with their f family members and friends of those fallen soldiers, Marines, uh, airmen, sailors, Coast Guardsmen. They can come there and they tell those stories and that, those stories become real therapy and mm -hmm. um, real um, uh, ability to heal mentally, emotionally, uh, and, and come to grips and come to terms and come to closure and all of that. So Global War on Terror is, I don't know if it's ever gonna end. I don't know if we'll ever see uh, phase three on it. We have a approved set of plans for a kind of a giant rotunda similar to the uh, World War II Memorial. And we have a place located and identified and approved, approved design, approved location to put it. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll continue to press in our fundraising endeavors to make that happen. And what about the Purple Heart Monument? <clears throat> well, fortunately for the park, we, we did have uh, that placed. And I don't know what year that was put in, but it, it means a lot to, to the families who, of course, all the fallen heroes that are there uh, uh, were given a Purple Heart. Mm. So it, again, it, it 
kind of reifies the fact that we do have uh, the veterans there and that represents not only the, the, the wounded veterans that did return, but all those that have fallen have also uh, received the Purple Heart. So, Interesting. Yeah. And I know too, this is something that really struck me, it really struck a chord with me when I uh, uh, have, have been at the park is this the, is the children's monument. You think you think about the, the children of these fallen yeah. heroes. They're the ones who you know, for everyone out there, this the kids, uh, the veterans who are the, the Marines, the soldiers, the sailors. They've all that were lost there. They all had many of them had kids, yeah. and uh, that carries on. And they they suffer the most. They're the ones who lose their fathers and, yeah. and it's, it's, you know, it's a very difficult situation for the family, but it's a terrible thing to have a child grow up without their fathers. Yeah, and it's, it's not to be um, confused about uh, with the child not just representing a child of a parent, it's also a child as a sibling. Mm -hmm. um, for example, when Staff Sergeant Sibley was killed in action in Afghanistan, um, you know, he left a sister named Jordan in most people in this community know Jordan pretty well. Um, and so, you know, or, or Corporal J.R. Spears, two younger sisters, he was their shining light, the biggest, most incredible, bigger than life, big brother you could ever imagine. And he was snatched from the jaws of life there and you got two sisters that really looked up to him um, and, you know, he's gone in an instant. So the child, the children's memorial or monument really represents the youth that is affected in such a way that they can't understand. Mm -hmm. um, but again, and it's tough to explain, but you put that monument there and you walk a child up to it and you talk about the loss of that sibling, uncle, brother, whatever, and you can help the child through the emotional thought process, turmoil, whatever it is, and allow them to relate to that memorial and monument and have them feel like they were considered at the park as well. Yeah. One more piece of precious cargo inside the jewel of the bay, yeah. Pensacola Veterans Memorial yeah. Park. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what you're working on as far as the uh, Gold Star uh, Memorial and, and Monument. Well, um, I, we just mentioned quite a few names uh, from the Global War on Terror. Um, and. Um, Herschel Woody Williams is a Medal of Honor recipient from World War II. He's, in fact, the last surviving Medal of Honor recipient from the Battle of Iwo Jima. In fact, there's only three living Medal of Honor recipients from all of World War II. He's 95 years old, soon to be 96 in October. And uh, just a few short years ago, he started, he recognized that nowhere was there an official government sponsored um, endeavor to acknowledge and, and, and pay respects to the families of the fallen so that there was this recognition of their loss and their sacrifice. And he has been on an absolute mission across this country uh, to bring these Gold Star families memorial monuments whereby the definition of a Gold Star family member is if you had a family member that served in the cloth of our nation and died as a result of their service, their military service, you're a Gold Star family, family member. And so the concept of Gold Star, which is a whole history in of itself, going from Blue Star when you're deployed to turning your Blue Star into a Gold Star in the window, when, the, when you get that knock at the door and your father or your brother or whatever has been killed, you now, now you're a Gold Star family. Well, that has been expanded to include all family members that have lost a loved one <clears throat> as a result of their service. And so the Greater Pensacola Area and the Veterans Memorial Park Foundation has embraced the community committee that has come uh, to present the Herschel Woody Williams Medal of Honor Foundation Gulf Coast Gold Star Families Memorial Monument Project. It's a mouthful for sure. Um, it's very important that we have all of those words in there because it represents all of our family members that have lost a loved one uh, as a result of their service, their military service, within the greater Gulf Coast area. So we're, the folks that are really working on that have, have got a, a strong message to those family members 
uh, and, and their extended family members and to the community is to get involved, support the project, um, and understand the importance of, of the fact that these family members, they're among us. Right. They're in our churches, they're in our schools, they're our coaches, they're our teachers, they're out there, um, and they're not looking for recognition, um, but they are looking for a place to go. And I'm, I'm getting very tight on time here, yeah. but um, Stan, talk just a little bit about the Walk of Honor. Oh, the Walk of Honor is a, a brick sales that we have that uh, you, that's being placed. We're taking up sections of concrete down there now, and we're placing these brick. And, and the, the way the public can really help out and identify that they have loved ones that have served, uh, this it's extremely important to, to note that this person doesn't have to have been deceased uh, or you know, died during war, but uh, he could be serving today, as a matter of fact. We have several of the, with the veterans that are, that are out there today that their parents feel compelled to buy these bricks for their loved ones who are mm -hmm. serving right now. And of course, any uh, even commercial uh, endeavors, uh, uh, companies here in Pensacola can buy the larger uh, the eight by eight bricks mm -hmm. and, and place theirs there. And, uh, it's, an, it's a very important thing that we're doing right now. It, it's helping generate funds that we need. Right now, we're, we have a lot of little projects down sure. there, and it's, it's all done by volunteer yeah. stuff. So a, this, is, this is an incredible endeavor uh, for the part right now right. to get on board, and we, we really need this uh, to go. Sure. And it's, it's not a lot of money to put something here for a loved one that, uh, that you really sure. care about and shows your appreciation for for what our country is, has done. Yeah. It is, uh, it's, it's a very moving place. I would encourage anyone that possibly can to go down and, and walk around and, and allow yourself plenty of time just to absorb everything and appreciate the magnitude of a, the uh, Veterans Memorial Park right near downtown Pensacola. And by the way, you can learn a lot more about the park by visiting their website at uh, Veterans uh, Memorial Park Pensacola dot org. But gentlemen, thank you so very much. Yeah. First of all, thank you for your service to our country, first and mm -hmm. foremost. And secondly, thank you for your service to our community and doing such a great job of uh, helping facilitate a, a wonderful place like Veterans Memorial it's Park. It's a team effort, and thanks mm -hmm. to WSRE for this opportunity. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, for it's, you. it's our pleasure. Yeah. It's our pleasure. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Again, uh, check that website out, uh, Veterans Memorial Park. Make sure I get this right. Veterans Memorial Park, Pensacola.org. You can also see more of our conversations online at wsre.org slash conversations. We're also on YouTube and Facebook. This particular show should be there soon, so feel free to share that over social media so people can learn more about Veterans Memorial Park. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Jeff Weeks. I certainly hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Take wonderful care of yourself, and we'll see you soon.